Hello and welcome to ABL. We've got a match for you guys. We've got Recon 5 and we've got Grim Legion Esports coming to you in this best of three series. We've gotten pretty deep into pick fans on your here. We got a pro draft going down. Uh, I am going to be your caster, Skyson. And lots of picks coming through that look very interesting to me. I'm going to run them through very quickly as I'm loading in on my end over here. But we are going to see. A pretty standardized across the bands. Uh, Vice Sejuani taking away the, the junglers. You have Deluxe, Vlad, Renekton, pretty strong leaders in their own right. You know, all the bands seem to make sense. I like the Kiana band. Kiana has been making kind of an appearance lately. But we are going to have Zaya Rakan for the bot lane of Recon 5. I believe Yasuo mid. Uh, they're going to go with the Nico top as well as the Gragas jungle. On the side of Grim Legion, we're going to see the Sivir Yumi bot lane alongside what I want to say is Silas mid. York top and the Jarvan jungle. So a lot of strengths coming through for both teams, and I'm going to. Um, I want to see a lot. You know, a lot of this uh, coming through from the Yumi. You know, Yumi and Silver both took pretty considerable hits over the last patch. We did see Yumi lose the mana restore on her auto attack passive on the Boppin block. So that is going to be pretty significant for constant harass in that lane. And Sivir herself, I believe, took a mana cost nerf on her W, as well as the changes to Essence Reaver's build components, so it's harder to get into the... You can no longer go into the pickaxe. You have to go into the full BF sword for that component. So, you know, seeing them a little bit weaker in lane versus the Zyra Khan has always been a pretty uh, consistent lane, something you can always uh, have really reliable amount of fight back and engage, as well as burst damage in lane. Yasuo is going to be pretty reliable. You have the knockups of both Rakan and, you know, the displacement from Gragas Body Slam and the explosive cask. So getting in there for a Yasuo engage is going to be very simple. And then, of course, Nico to prove to uh, add a little bit of DPS to the back line as well as being able to get into the center of the fights. On the side of Grim Legion, you have a much bulkier team. You have the Jarvan Yorick kind of frontline Jarvan trying to trap people in for the Yorick to get a good setup off the Maiden of the Mist. Silas having several good ultimates here. You know, you can even grab the Yasuo ultimate. To follow up off the Jarvan EQ if you find the proper targets. Uh, Yumi Sivri very strong in their own right as well, but we're going to get it over to the game client so you can see it all in action. But I like the I like the composites here. I think Yorick's an interesting pick. I isn't really seen super often outside of maybe the solo queue, the people that want to just play the island top laner. I believe we are going to have a substitution here in the top lane for Recon 5. Tanzo is not going to be present for these matches. So we are going to see part time dad taking his spot up there, and I believe I won't be denied. You know, at the same time, everything else coming through looks pretty standard to me. Uh, seeing the Nico, you know, the range top laner, to answer the Yorick up there, shouldn't have too much of a problem unless you have, you know, again, it's it's a it's a back and forth battle between ganking junglers. Jarvan, a very notorious level 2, level 3, level 3 and a half, level 3 and 3 quarters type junk ganker, as well as the ability for Gragas to just kind of get in there with a body slam, get you displaced, get you a lot of damage coming off of a pretty tanky body. So both of these gankers are pretty strong with what they're capable of doing. Uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of early game aggression. You know, you can play around Nico snare pretty easily. You have uh, early instances for Yasuo to come in and get some damage through. At the same time, Silas is a very burst, you know, combo type mage champion. And if Yorick gets some good exchanges to go in his favor in lane, then he's got a lot of leeway to start you know, beating down the enemy laner. So lots of action I expect to see going on through the early. You know, looking at things, how they're going to go on through the rest of the game, I think that things are kind of looking pretty nice for Recon 5. You know, The reliability of Zai Recon, Zai is a very dependable AD carry throughout pretty much all stages of the game. You have Reliable Engage with both Gragas and Rakan, who both set up for Yasuo. Nico provides a pretty annoying distraction on the front line and back line. So you have pretty good protection all across the board, no matter where you really want to go there. Versus Grim Legion, who's really, I think, looking towards more of a mid-game spike. You know, Yorick, not exactly the most reliable damage throughout every stage of the game. He's very, very potent early on with the base numbers and the damage that the ghouls bring in. Silas very... Overstep. You know, Silas has been changed quite a few times patch-wise, uh, nerfing his wave clear, uh, sort of pulling away from his ability, scaling throughout the rest of the game. Jarvan, you know, his damage tends to fall off and he builds a little bit tankier than most champions. So relying a lot on the burst, on the DPS of Sivir for these fights. So as long as, you know, 
Grim Legion is looking at not wanting to get caught up in these Yasuo knockups and these Gragas engages. If Sivir can keep herself safe and let the rest of the team do the fighting in front of her, I think Grim Legion is going to have a decent positional advantage. But I don't know that they'll have the DPS to really stack up to Zaya, Yasuo, and Nico. I think it'll be a problem for them if they're not looking to get an early lead, which is typically what you want to do on Jarvan. Jarvan has two pretty cool lanes to gank for here, even uh, you know, constant Yumi Sivir harass can get Zyra Khan down low for a Jarvan follow-up. I think there's lots of avenues for them to get an early advantage to snowball into a better mid-game fight that our five's not really looking to let them have. But we're going to see how it goes down, and I'm going to take a short couple-second break. But looking across the board, I think, I know summoners don't lock in right now. We're seeing uh, lots of teleports coming through. We're going to see Recon 5 is going to go for the Ignite on the Yasuo. Heal on the Zaya, you know, the traditional, more traditional type. We are going to see the triple teleport coming through for the side of Grim Legion. Uh, we're going to have it on Yorick, Silas, and Sivir. So you know, Yumi being able to bring the heal, Ignite not too worried about bringing Flash on her own self, spending most of the time on people's shoulders. It'll be interesting to see if these teleports are used to good effect on the side of Grim Legion. They really want to do what they can to create early advantages for themselves. They can't let themselves... Falling behind on their comp is going to be bad for them because the less the less advantage you have to bulk up against this DPS output from this Recon 5 squad, the worse of a position it's going to be for you later on in the fight. So they have to get an advantage early and say, we can you know soak up all the damage you're able to throw out while we have more items than you, and we're going to roll over you and lose, use it for an advantage. So it's definitely going to be good for them to play off the back of Hands of Blood here, uh, get something moving with the Jarvan, you know, maybe even catch out Moody in his jungle Gragas. Uh, the last I recall from him, they took a pretty sizable hack at his base attack speed, as well as the reliability. So the reliability of his clear has kind of taken a couple hits. You've seen him, you know, sort of fade out of the meta for that reason. He hasn't been as popular of a jungler because he's no longer able to reliably just blow up camps, come in there, spend a couple, a little bit of HP to knock people around with, you know, Really good CC. Like that was that was always Gragas' thing. He has an incredible kit of crowd control to bring to ganks. That's you know not as aim heavy as driving. You don't really have to. You, you kind of throw yourself with the E so you can aim the Q easier and this and that. But at the same time, nerfing his initial clear has made his early game power a little bit weaker. So if maybe that is an avenue that Hands of Blood is looking to abuse here, you have the ability for Silas and York can both be pretty you know shove heavy. That early on, they can be pretty shove-heavy champions, so they can follow up something that Hands of Blood wants to look for, maybe in the early game. But at the same time, you know that's that's what I'll be looking for. I'll be looking for mostly where these jungles are going to be headed. Uh, you know, the triple teleport on the side of Grim Legion is something they want to utilize for the for their pathing versus the combat-heavy heal and ignite uh, on Recon Five side. But we'll have to see how it converges. If I were to look at it, I think that I would probably put this in the hands of Recon 5. You know, we've seen, and I mean, looking at the, the scores of these teams, you know, we're looking at the 3-1. You know, just looking at numerics-wise, we're looking at a 3-1 Recon 5 squad. They've looked incredibly strong. They've only had, you know, a very, even the loss they had was pretty considerably close. They're definitely a team that's showed that they have they have the strength. And I believe Grim Legion is coming in at, I want to say, 0-4, potentially 0-3. I have to check the stats team. You know, they're they're looking a lot shakier this season, so it's not it's not unreasonable to think the Recon Five can kind of better than you their way through the early game and get themselves, you know, never end up being in that disadvantage position. So we'll have to see how it goes down and we are gonna cut to a break before we get into game here, so hang tight. And we will be getting into game one between Recon Five and Grim Legion Esports.
Wait a minute, I didn't. I didn't hear on pause. I'm paused to 11 seconds. I am good. Hello, welcome. Hello. Okay. We are here. We've got game one. We've got Recon 5. we got Grim Legion Esports. Uh, looking pretty standard here. We're seeing the five lines sitting up in the jungle. Looking to see how these things go through. I've got myself hype for this grab the couple of bottles of water i'm looking for a good game here i'm looking for some action everything looks pretty standard the duran ring the corrupting potions corrupting potions i wanted to say a little bit about the item you know considerably less it's not as explosive of an item the damage on the corrupting potion no longer scales over the course of the game it's a flat 15 damage at every level so you won't see as huge of fights with it as you would normally but we're going to see a little bit of movement from recon 5 hands of blood is going to poke see them out Rife Fornic on the side is going to see these three looking, and that's what they are. Not too much interference there. We're going to see both Graguses on the map, head to the blue buff. A little Chain Lash action coming from Rife Fornic. Boom Hunter going to walk back out. Don't expect to see too much going after this. We're going to see the leash on the blue side. Both Jungles are going to start blue here. So we are going to see Boom Hunter is going to try to peek around there. Maybe looking to throw their concu, but it's not going to happen. He's going to walk himself back out of there. We're going to see part-time dad is going to head back up to the top lane to answer 12 inch. I like that recon bot lane moved up and got a ward on the blue. They couldn't really know what's going on here with Jarvan, how much time he's spending. I say not having to get an idea like we were trying to on the side <clears throat> of Grim Legion Esports, but they do realize you know, they did check around that area and realize nobody was guarding the red, so they have a decent idea that no one's going to be there and they're going to start. And of course, the leash that we saw from Part Time Dad sort of gave it away. Part Time Dad putting a pretty good amount of harass early on the PvP, but he's going to return some ghouls on him for some fair amount of damage. We are going to see the gank coming in there. It's level 2. Hands of Blood. Going to give E also through him. He's looking for the EQ combo. Finds the EQ. Finds a knockup. Looks for it. There's no ignite or anything. Sandillion's going to turn it around, though. They have to be careful. Hands of Blood taking dodge and making damage. There's the Q. There's the E. The ignite's out on Hands of Blood. He has nowhere to go. First one from Sandillion. He Q's in. He slides through. Right there. He pulls himself back in, and he's dead. That Why would he come back there? That was a mistake by Silas. Oh, that's not what they wanted at all. That's going to be two quick kills going in the pocket of Recon 5. Hands of Blood waiting way too long for that EQ combo. He finally let it rip. Minion damage was on his back for so long that Sindillion was able to turn the damage on him. That was before Moody, Moody even showed up. The Silas was free and clear in that engagement. He, he could have just walked away from that. But he jumps back in. Yeah, I don't know if he... I don't know if he was behind on a couple of Silas patch notes because, you know, previously, just the patch before, Silas got the shield when you use the chain to go in. But they've since reverted that back to the uh, the first cast, but it now only gives you a Matic damage shield. So a little bit different. Not going to give him the shield that he wants. Going to give him the kill that Sindillion wanted instead, but it's going to go one to Moody. So a quick 2 on the side of Recon. Well, so far in this game, things are looking up for Recon. Already a 1,000 gold lead, three and a half minutes in. Yeah, this is going to be the exact opposite of what Green Legion is going to want for their comp to do. You know, I explained a lot of it. You know, a lot of this, these tank here against the DPS, these snares some part-time dead. He's running out of mana. He's using the W for the speed up. He has to watch out for the Glacial Augment auto attacks. He is going to throw up the cage, and that is going to get enough to keep him alive. Zendillion is looking for aggro there. We're going to see the dash come from Rifornic. Right Another snare is going to land. There's the Q. Auto in the Q is going to pop. Part-time dad is going to take the solo kill over PvP in the top lane. That feels so bad, laning against Nico and just constantly being hit by those snares. Yeah, it's rough to watch, you know, especially when you're playing against these mages and you kind of want to use their mana as a good idea of, 
you know, how far behind and how able to cast these spells are. But Nico's spells are very low cost, especially your Q. I think your EQ combo is something of like 70, maybe 75 mana. So it's it's very reliable and available very often, even when you think she's just really low on mana. And of course, the W itself is free, and every third auto it actually has the passive damage added on, which costs obviously nothing. So it's it's a very rough champion to try to play around when you think of resources. We're gonna see the spell shield come through from Ikea. Gonna dodge out the knock up from the grand entrance. I got excited when you said Ikea. I thought we were getting like a couch in my or something. Dude, I wanna say that's Ikea. I've, I've never met this man in my life. And I'm probably butchering his name. If you're a Grim Legion fan, hit me in the chat with how you pronounce this name, because I believe it is Ikea. And if I, you know, I could be wrong. It could happen. So something he's, I'm he's looking at here, uh, Infernal Drake is the first one. It is up. That would be a great way for R5 to snowball this early lead, is to get some quick objectives. Yeah, we are going to see Burn Legion moves down. They are spotted out by the control words. They do know Jarvan is on the bottom side of the map. We do see Moody. Or, yeah, Moody is already sitting there. So they're looking to make a play here in the bot lane and come right up to that dragon, most likely. Moody just kind of hopping around. Do you see PvP is going to walk down here, try to maybe get some vision of his own. Yo, he's actually going to just go and go do a camp of his own. It's like, you know what, I don't like this top lane anymore, I'm just going to go try some jungling. He's still sitting at a pretty solid CS advantage, you know, a lot of the... A lot of the mage top laners you saw, you know, you saw them in the previous patches of just playing spell thief klepto and said, hey, I'll just sacrifice the CS in lieu of harassing you to death. But now they don't have that option to generate as much gold. So Yorick's still able to find himself a decent amount of farm while this is happening to him. Something else I liked about that roam from Yorick, not only did he get the cross, but he checked the blue buff. So it's just a matter of trying to track where Moody is on the map and try to keep him out of snowballing. Yeah, they did get a look at that timer, so they are going to have that Moody not wanting, to, already dealing with enough harass from Dad, not wanting to add Moody to the mix to make things harder for him. Having an idea that he might be on his way up. He does drop the Maiden of the Mist there, so the Maiden is going to have to get burned down as she's hitting up these minions. See a knockup come from Rai4. Oh, we see Hands of Blood! Level 5, he's driving, Sandillion's sliding around, he's looking to build up a Q. He misses out that Q, no he has it! Has a knockup, finds the knockup on Jarvan, goes for the last breath! There's Moody on the back with a body slam, and they turn it around, find the kill on him, Moody. That's the explosive gas! He gets knocked back, he has to find somewhere to go. He's holding the Yasuo to him, but can't get anything off of it. Didn't find a pull off the chain and came to a minion. This time, the Silas learned did not E back in after the fight was over. However, it still feels real bad when you gank the Yasuo and you end up dying. Yeah, you have to be clear with your CC, especially on Jarvan. You know, a level 5 Jarvan, if he's going to miss his EQ, which is not only missing the knockup, but it's the Dragon Strike on the Q, that is a terrifyingly high amount of damage. You know, the Q itself has high base damage. It drops the it drops the enemy's armor by I believe 25 percent so the skill in itself is so important to connect when you're having a gank on Jarvan like that that if you miss that that's such a significant portion of your damage that you, honestly you need to walk it out at that point Grim Legion trying to sneak an infernal Drake here but it's spotted out Gonna have to back away from that. We are gonna see the Rakan coming in there, gonna find the knock by the hands of blood, looking for something to happen. He's gonna have to walk out of there though, they are collapsing on it. We are gonna see the dragon is gonna go over there! Zendillion looking for the flash! The feather storm coming through, hands of blood, he's gonna get flashed away from Boom Hunter! He's gonna dodge the Jarvan EQ! What an incredible kill from the turnaround there. They're gonna pick up the dragon, but it's not gonna be what they want. Oh, we're looking for more. Sandillion's on the back of Rifornic. There's four there. Oh, the Moody with the flash by slam over the wall. Rifor's gonna find himself the flash out of there. They're not gonna have the last breath available. Oh, they're coming back for Moody. The Moody went too far. Gonna find the chain lash, and that's gonna be the kill going over to Ikea. I appreciate Recon 5's vigor and, you know, ability to snowball this game. However, that's a little two balls to the for me. Oh, part time. 
He's gonna find the Nico Ultimate, the Pop Blossom is gonna pop PvP's Blossom. He's gonna go down, and it's gonna be another solo kill in the top lane. Sin Dillian finding a lot of damage on Rifornic in that mid. This is the kind of action that Recon 5 was looking for. They've got Sindillion in a pretty good spot. They've got Moody on a roll. They've absolutely shut down Hands of Blood. He could not find himself anywhere safe to go right now. Oh, Sindillion. Oh, he's going to spend... He's going to spend the Q on the minions there. Not going to look for the knockoff. He has... He doesn't quite have the last breath available. Things have seemed to quiet down a little bit at the 10 minute mark. We are seeing a 3,000 gold lead at 10 minutes. I feel like that's a pretty good goal to set. However, that might not be Oh, enough. Boom Hunter. Going for the hop. Does the ultimate gonna get the flash drive from Ikea? The body slam is gonna land though. The Yumi ultimate thought it's gonna be enough. No, the explosive cast is gonna take it away. Teleport's coming through from Rifornic, but it's too late. The ultimate's there. He grabs the explosive cast, but he gets snared up. Wow. But is that enough damage coming through? That was the explosive cast! He's gonna find it. Yuki Buddy is gonna go down. They trade fade away Gragas ults. Grim Legion also trying to pick up this Rift Herald here. So far, they've gotten both of the neutral objectives on the map. And if there's anything that can keep you into a game when you're this far behind, it's picking up an early Infernal and an early Itch Rift Herald. Oh, Sindillion trying to make some more action happen. The Naka's not going to find it right for it. He's gonna pull himself back into the fight, but he has no Yumi ultimate! He's knocked him by Rakan! Sandilli's gonna find the last breath. There's the Ignite down at Sleepy Bulbasaur, and another one comes through, and that's gonna be the kill coming in for Boom Hunter. Moody and Sandillion are styling this game. I like the smite, even though there was, a, there was an Ignite on Yumi, but they Moody smited just to make sure that the Ignite was going to take over the kill. Oh, the Pop Blossom sitting in the cage. The light damage coming through in a PvP. He's got the Spectre Scout Merc Trides, but is it enough? The Snare coming through through the minion, so he gets the extra duration. The Q's coming out. The Ghouls are on, though. PvP is looking for him. No, it's not going to happen. He has the damage with the main. One Q should do it. No, he's snared. There's the Q. He tries to get the Q heal from the minion. He gets it. Oh, no. At the same time, he explosive cast the Body Slam. Bulbasaur doesn't even get to attach to Ikea, but they're looking for it now. The Jarvan EQ is coming through. They have the Sivir on the hunt. They're looking for some more boom hunters gonna pop the quick the quickness. He's gonna get himself out. There's the driving cataclysm. Gonna lock down on the Moody. He's not able to bias them out. They're gonna take the kill back onto him. And at the same time, they're gonna drop the Rift Herald on the top lane. BVP's gonna put that on his side. I didn't even catch it to drop the Rift Herald. He's definitely mentioning that. But that is definitely a thing that Grim Leader did in the meantime. But the teleport is gonna come through from part time dad to answer it. I talked about the Rift Herald for like 30 seconds. I was there, I promise. In, in <laughs> spirit. I think I heard Rift Herald and I was like, yeah, I'd be pretty good if one of these teams did Rift Herald. I just wasn't about it. Oh! Yeah, like, confrontation like I was there, saying Sindillion. earlier, though, despite, you know, Sindillion's playing out of his mind, Moody is having some awesome ganks, but I feel like Grim Legion's doing everything they can just to keep their head slightly above the water. Um, like I said, like I was saying, the Rift Herald, the Infernal Drake, they got plates off the Rift Herald top, which is what they want um, Yorick to have. You know, keep him up where Nico's not harassing him too much. And this is what I want to oh see. Oh my lord. There's the knockup coming through. Bulbasaur is going to get murdered. That's exactly Nowhere is safe. My recon 5 does. Keep snowballing. He lets the Gillian make the plays on the Asura. Moody is just gonna run right into Hands of Blood, looking for him next, but nobody's gonna be there for the follow-up, he's just messing with him. Silas once again stealing the Gragas ult. Gonna try to make a play with this here bot, maybe, but four people down here, I think it's too risky. 
I was say if he can bring some friends with him, they can make some ham, but they are gonna- Oh, the Predator's coming through from Moody, finds the Flash Body Slam on two! There's the cast, no follow-up ultimate on Sedillion, but he's gonna find the Flash, he's looking for him on the side at the same time, right, Fornix gonna go down, Moody's- He's trying to find the EQ, hands of blood, can he get away from Sedillion? No, the man's too fast. He is going to find himself another kill. That is a two pickup for Recon 5. They are extending this lead like crazy. Tower going down on the hunt coming through. But we're going to see the snare come down to Bulbasaur. The Feather Storm coming up there. Trying to escape to his friends. They do show up in time. I love watching Moody on these Grog Assaults. I feel like every single one of them has right. been on point. This is mastery of this champion. I was talking about a lot about how tanky he was and how much CC offered, but I mean, you see him building the sorcerers, you, you see yeah. him building the there, because he's going full damage, it'll just kill someone with it. Ultimate gonna come through, all the minions are dead, PvP, can you get it? He gets it, but he's gonna die for his sins. Killing spree. So at 15 minutes, we're looking at a 7,000 gold lead now. This has been a pretty much just a staircase of gold lead this entire game. We're trying to defend the tower. Not going to happen. It's evened up to 2-2. Two and two. And we're going to see if Grim Legion can find out the Rakan. But the yes yeah, he's gonna throw in. the knockout through the Q. War's gonna come out of there. He turns around for the catacomb. It's not gonna happen. Once again, Grim Legion thinks they find a catch, and it ends up in a large bait of Sindelium. Yeah, we are gonna see. Not what they're looking for at all, and it's really hiding. It's it's hell or high water here at this point for Grim Legion. Even making a catch at this point, like you said, there's there's so much damage coming out of every non Boom Hunter member of this Recon Five team that really making a catch doesn't mean anything. Nobody's taking enough to survive the return return fire at this point. You're looking to maybe catch Boom Hunter if he's off warding and absolutely runs into four of you, and even then he could probably ult and ult EW and get himself out. Right. But now, it's uh the only the only way the only win condition I can see for Green Legion would be if Yorick were winning the split first matchup, which at this point it's not happening. And maybe if the Sivir gets to be real fed lit game, but at this point they're they're very far behind. They're gonna have to be looking for like a miracle fight around Baron or just hold off basically. Yeah, they're looking for something. The explosive cast goes down. Several ultimate comes through. They find something. There's an ult coming through on two. That's going to be the disappearance of Sedillion. He's going to die. Moody's going to die after the back there. That's a good fight. Grim Legion looks what they're finds what they're looking for. Yuki Bunny might go down next. Finds a snare on the two of them. She's going to walk away. Boom Hunter might go down next. Right Morning's on his back. Yumi on his back. Going to see the shutdown come through. That's going to be nearly an ace for the side of Grim Legion. Off the back of a Silas stolen Gragas ultimate. If your goal is to stem the bleed and stay in the fight, that's how you do it. No kidding. Say, so, hey, this ultimate looked really good in a couple of these fights. Let me try it out. By Fornic, really putting the work in there. Part time dad. Gonna mess him up with the W, getting a little bit of damage on the hand. To be honest, every single member of Recon 5 has a very juicy alt for Silas to steal. Even stealing a Rakan alt to get that movement speed and the taunt running into a fight. I mean, literally anything is good at this point. Yeah, I was gonna say they can absolutely utilize, you know, that's, that's sort of the, the nice thing about the versatility of Silas is you get all these different situations you'd want to use X ultimate in, and if it looks appropriate, then you go for it. And you saw. Red, Red Fornic was sitting around thinking about, you know, all these ultimates pounding on his tower. He's like, which of these do I really want to take? And he said, you know, probably the one that displaces four people and throws a million into our face so we can kind of just smash him in the meantime. But we are going to see Moody's going to throw down the explosive cask actually to get PvP, but he's still not going to get out of there. Moody might have to go down next. No, he's going to see the Yumi ultimate. He pops the stopwatch, but at the same time, they're going to run him over for that. He pops the W. Not going to be enough. We're going to see the teleport come in. 
from the side of Nico, he channels the ultimate side, and now he dies next! What is happening right now? We're seeing Recon 5 going down, Blue Hunter over the wall, they're gonna chase him down easily. Raptors might get to him first, PvP's looking for him, he flashes out to get away from the goop. Yuki's next, no, no, you gotta watch out for Rifornic, he's sitting up on the feathers though, there's Sindillion on the back, he turns it around and finds the kill onto Rifornic, PvP's looking for him on the side, tries to make the fight happen. I don't know if you're taking enough to deal with him right now, Sindillion goes to the last breath, PvP flashes away, not in time! Double kill gonna come in for Sindillion, he's going low, but not low enough, that's still more than 0 HP. Yuki, but he's gonna find the feather storm, he's gonna throw the Q in the back. Wonderful knockup on the, to deny the Jarvan follow up there in the end of the fight that would have spelt danger for recon 5 yeah these are i mean we you were definitely seeing signs of life grimly this is not not the they did not moments ago look like a team that was 14 kills down and had no hope they are trying to utilize everything that they absolutely can to their advantage and, you know, they did a pretty good job there you know evened up the towers you know four to three uh, put some kills in their pocket. Put a lot of shutdown money in a lot of people's pockets. Absolutely. So their their item that disparity. single fight with the shutdowns we saw earlier, the gold lead went from a seven thousand plus to a three thousand. So that was absolutely keeping them into the game at this point. Now we're starting to get to see more of a late game sliver. Um, hopefully the York can start splitting against this team as well. Yeah, I would say this is this is what Grim Legion is trying to get towards. They're trying to get towards uh, them being able to maybe answer this engage. Say we're not going to let Gragas control the course of these fights. And maybe send York off to the side, you know, pop a couple towers in their favor, regain some of this map control so they're not being picked off at any point. And I think it happened. The other thing I'm kind of worried about in Recon Five is with Gragas's build, they really don't have a tank. You know, Jarvan and York both going to be fairly tanky in these team fights. Even Silas with his life steal is going to be hard to kill late game, with a Yumi bouncing between all of them healing. But you jump over to Recon Five in these team fights, they're going to oh die. the the buff coming through to right Fornic. He's actually going to get caught up there, but it's going to be enough. They're going to actually turn this around. Sindillion's dead. They're looking for more hands of blood to confirm. We're talking about the tankiness. We're seeing right Fornic live through way more than he should. Moody's is going to find the kill on him at the, at the end of the day. Boom Hunter stuck in the middle of the pit as we see the kill coming through on him, Moody. And that's going to be the 4 for 1 on the side of Grim Legion. This is exactly what you were just talking about. This is the tankiness of Grim Legion shining in these fights. Absolutely. And this should lead to a fairly early Baron. Assuming they have the damage and health check, which they do. And this is pretty much the entire gold graph swinging right back as they get this. Yeah, this is this is the price of overconfidence. This is the price of Moody breaking away from the meta and saying, you know, I want to build the mage kill you. This is what happens. You get caught. This is this is now becomes a match of catch. The first team to get caught on the end of these fights is gonna just blow up. And if you lose one of your core if we keep seeing Sindillion, the 7-2 Yasuo die at the start of this fight because they got picked off by a stray cask or a stray Jarvan knockup into an instant kill, then that's just the core of Recon 5 blown out completely. This is exactly what Grim Legion is looking for now. You see the conversion has come out. You have the Hourglass finished on Moody. He's looking for the Glacial Shroud next. He's Probably looking to convert his build at this point into you know the tankiness that his team needs. Absolutely. As we see Nico has finished up both of the glacial augment items, most likely looking for an hourglass of her own. And to to flip flop here, now recon, their entire win condition is pretty much just gonna be a Rogus alt Yasuo alt combo in the team fight. Yeah, they have to go for that Wombo combo. That's absolutely what you're looking for in these kinds of fights. Look at that damage coming through from PvP. Absolutely chewing through part-time that after that cage. And he's just going to pound out on this tower now. Doesn't quite have the Maiden available yet, but they are going to look for him. So no, going to slide through some minions. He can't get caught in the cage. He's looking for 12 now. PvP is going to get caught. He's in the middle of fourth. Throws the Q. Throws the knockup. Nowhere for him to go. He drops the Maiden. It does absolutely nothing. However, that's five people dedicated to killing 
PvP here, while the rest of the team has Baron buff, pushing down mid, pushing in top. Oh, the ultimate's gonna come out from Boom Hunter. He's not gonna make anything happen. Jarvis gonna EQ out. They're gonna find the Silver Ultimate. They're just gonna run away. They put a lot of damage down on that tower. This is exactly the type of hit and run they're looking for. They've brought the towers back to even. They've almost brought the gold lead back completely from their 7k deficit. Grim Legion is absolutely fighting back. And now we're seeing this Silver Wave clear. We are seeing the scaling potential come out from Grim Legion. This next fight is absolutely going to be crucial for either team right now. This is the fight that Grim Legion is looking. You see, see the pings going down. Infernal Drake coming up in about 15 seconds. This is absolutely going to be a pivotal fight for this game, I promise you. The first person you see die in this fight will tell the entire story. You see the entire squad of Grim Legion. Recon 5 is waiting for them. Gragas Q is going to send the first message. They're looking. Ward's getting cleared. This is going to be the fight. I promise you. Here comes the Glacial Augment. They're looking for some more. Boom Hunter's going to find the knockup. They find it. The Yubi is coming through on two. Yes, Sidonian's going to be on the back. They're looking for right forty, but he's getting pushed out of the fight. The Nico Ultimate's going to come down on the three. They look for more right four next down. They're coming down with the Jarvan Ultimate. Sidonian is still alive. The shutdown's coming down on the server. They're looking for some more on the back of the fight. PvP's going to take it down. Sidonian's going to remain alive here. Take himself a double kill. Three for one on the side of Recon 5. That is the fight they were looking for on their terms. What was amazing about that is Sindelian only altered one person. Because of the Sivir spell shield, wasn't able to get that knocked up, but it really doesn't matter. Sindelian's just so far ahead, got into the back line with that ult, and tore through Grimly. See, the beautiful thing about it was Sindelian, who had originally been with the rest of his team, through that Q to the back of Grim Legion, found the ultimate to sort of warp himself over there. With, you know, originally this Grim Legion squad was looking to focus down Sindelian in these fights, get him out of the fight immediately. But when he found himself the last breath to cross the map and uh, get himself out of there, they immediately tried to turn their focus onto Sindelian. Sindelian immediately followed up by Eing through the Jarvan that he found the ult on and flashing away to distract them while the rest of his team could run over. Then you saw Part-Time Dad come in with an equal ultimate. You saw all the ultimates sort of follow in over that. And the rest of Recon 5 said, hey, we're here too. You can't just fight that guy. And it really worked out for them over the course of that fight. And then Sindelian, after they had been uh, hit up by the rest of the team, found a way to slide back into that fight and say, by the way, I'm going to put some kills in my pocket. Right. And what's, definitely what's amazing about that fight also is just what I was saying before, Recon 5's win condition is their wombo combo. When, when Grim Legion had to funnel into that fight, they were all grouped up, they all got hit by Nico ult, they got hit by a Gragas ult, they got hit by a Yasuo ult. I mean, that's exactly the kind of fight that Recon wants to take is just jumping right on all of them. Yeah, as they fighting these kind of hallway-esque fights are definitely the ones that Recon 5 are looking for. You know, you have, as soon as you're grouped up for a Nico Gragas ultimate, the setup for the Yasuo, it's all there and it's all perfect. And I think as soon as they saw that they were crossing a Gragas Q to get through that Dragon Corridor, I think that that's the point where they realized we can't really all file in here at the same time. Grim Legion kind of had to stagger their entrances so they weren't just setting themselves up for the full Wombo there. Hand of Blood's going to look for something that Yumi you Ultimate is going to come through. Well, we see the knockup coming through. We're going to see the stopwatch come through on the right corner. The Gragas are going to come down too late. The knockup is there on Hands of Blood. Step there, they close cast coming through. Looking for some more damage on the back there. Are they able to sustain through this fight? Ikea is going to flash over. He's going to find him, but Zaya is going to do too much damage. Yuki Bunny is going to find the kill. Better AD Carry finds the kill there. Yuki's gonna turn it around, looking for more. Another three for O on the side of Recon Five. They are looking to bring it through there. Yeah, and it's absolutely tragic how much this game has seesawed back and forth. You know, just when you start to root for one team, things change. Yeah, I don't think they're looking to bring it home. Though they are gonna take the inhibitor now. Oh. Another shift. An advantage towards the side of Recon 5. The next dragon is looking to be a mountain coming up in about two minutes, but already looking for the Baron as we see the Recon 5 is gonna. They're actually just gonna go for it. They say, you know what, we've shoved you in your base. We took your in inhibitor. We may see another fight coming in the Baron. Well, this, this could, could be 50 50 if Jarvan can get in here fast enough. Yeah, let's say the dragon's low. We're looking There's for it. No Hands of Blood not gonna get nope. there in time, though. Now, crucially, there, 
Yasuo threw out his uh, tornado, which is usually used to prevent Jarvan from EQing into the. Oh! Right, Fornic? Off the back of the Yumi Ultimate, looking for a little more there. But we're also gonna have to walk out of there. We actually see civilians and never find the return kill. But they are gonna take him out. Now, overall, I'd say that's worth for Grim Legion. They got Cendillion dead, and they got the Baron off of him. And, and they only paid the price with a with a little cat. Oh, However, they find the kill. Now, Hands of Blood's gonna disappear under the back of that Deco comp. Hands of Blood had zero reason to be where he was. Look where his team is defending mid. No reason to be blind checking at River when the enemy team hey. is there. You and your Randu and Ninja Tabby still play are not ready for that Nico burst damage coming through. They're gonna try to walk out of there right next gonna tell them, hey bro, get out of my jungle. So there's that ward out. We are gonna see your Kun 5 is gonna push up on these towers a little more. Twin Shadow is gonna look for somebody, right? Fornix gonna get found out. Predator's coming down. Moody finds a knockback. There comes the knockout. He goes for the stopwatch. The Aragon's gonna come out, but there's the damage coming through that Nico combo. Absurd! There's the flash! Moody finds it! Trying to get the sleep mobile store, trying to combo him out before he can find the five. But that tankiness is not gonna be enough damage for the full combo. Mobile store is gonna find the back of the man's shoulder. Double Mountain and an Infernal Drake is a very good thing to have when you just took Baron and you are shoving in at all sides. Yeah, this is definitely what we're looking for as we see this back and forth. Recon 5 is looking to sort of storm up this base, saying, all right, you see all of us. Are you able to bring us your fight? You see Hands of Blood kind of looking around on the side. The knock is coming through. Gonna get some damage on the main. Hands of Blood is super nervous as he's sitting around here, trying to look for the right moment, but it's gonna get caught out by the Twin Shadows. Gonna find him, drop a freeze ray. Looking for some more redemption. Gonna come down, top everybody off. And the problem I see here is, how does Grim Legion even pull the trigger? I mean, Jarvan doesn't want to jump in there. They got so much CC and disengage in one of these fights. It's almost fell certain doom if he just jumps in. And Yumi ult could do it. Oh, he's gonna come through. They're looking for some more here. Trying to find the back up in there. The knockup's coming through. Sandillion's on the back there. Ikea's gonna go down. Looking for some more. PvP's coming out. It's coming through. Coming in. Rudy's coming back. He's gonna find the barrel. Looking for hands of blood there. He's gonna go through. Stopwatch's gonna get himself alive. Double killing for Sandillion. Sandillion's still alive! They can't stop this man at Quadra Kill! He's gonna find the ace. They're gonna find the end of this game. And that's gonna be exactly what Recon 5 was looking for. They cannot be stopped. Their seesaw came all the way back up. And they're in there for game one.
Hello, and who woots you in the chat? We've got game two coming at you. We've got Grim Legion Esports. We've got Recon 5. We've got the Pro Draft coming in for you. I'm coming in at the start of it to the Pix fans instead of at the end of it. So we're going to see what happens. We've got the Lucian Band coming out for Grim Legion. We've got the Vi Band coming out for Recon 5. This is going to be quick. This is going to be furious. Kiana Band. I believe we're going to see mostly the same bands as we saw last game. They kind of seem like targeted bands to me. There were a couple that were pretty, you know, pretty standard. Kiana, Sejuani. Lots of ones that you just want to see off the board. Yumi is going to disappear off this side for Recon 5, though. They do not want to see that come through for Grim Legion this time. Now, Yumi, yeah, I think she did a pretty good job of cementing herself. A lot of those fights started off the back of a well-placed Yumi ultimate. So, offering that and seeing if we got something else in the back of Bulbasaur's pocket. Uh, a little bit of deliberation in this third pick, see if you want to change it up from what they saw Recon 5 pull out in this game. Maybe they're going to, nope, they're going to take away the Karma again. Those, I believe, are the same three bands, so they are going to go away. We're going to see what Recon 5 decides to switch it up to. Maybe they want to take away the, I don't know, maybe the Orc, I don't know. What? Is going to be the Lux. They're going to see the Lux come through and not going to want to deal with that. You know, two pretty strong supports, Karma, especially after her patch, even though they did revert the movement speed duration on her E shield because that was incredible. They are not going to let that go through. And then Lux can take me. You know, Lux is, Lux is the queen of support right now. You can talk about whoever else you want to, but Lux, which, you know, I could talk, I could talk for a mile a minute about how I feel about Lux having been a great support for as long as she ever has been until she got discovered by pro play is what it is nico is going to be on the board now for grim legion they are going to put that back most likely on the top laner we did see a very good performance coming out from wait a minute that was part-time dad on the nico top last game but now we're going to see maybe pvp is going to have it this time that'd be interesting to see if they're going to flip it but they are going to take caitlin morgana is going to be the pickup for recon 5 in response here uh, Caitlyn, you know, very oppressive, very, you know, she is naturally the I see your face, I'm gonna click on you. That just kind of is what it is. It's I don't know about you, Skyson, but as a support player, I absolutely hate Caitlyn Morgana combo. Get, get both of those champs out of my life. I hate playing against them. I hate supporting Morgana. I, I can't stand supporting, or I, I can't stand supporting Caitlyn. I think Caitlyn <laughs> is the most self sufficient, the most self sufficient AD carry you could ever have. You could pick. You could pick Rex I support and probably still do well with the Caitlyn. She's just, she really is just the do it all kind of AD carry that can really hold her own. And having a Morgana Black Shield there, having Morgana can miss 85% of her Qs and still exist in lane. She hits one, then you're trapped, then you're dead, and oh, you can't even fight back because there's Black Shield. It's it's just a rough time. Absolutely. Caitlyn by herself is rough to lane against. Add Morgana onto the mix, and you really just you don't want to deal with it. Speaking of the opposite side, how do you feel about the Braum Kaisa? I personally don't like Braum very much, especially against a Kate Morgana. He is going to be eating those cues, those traps, those pokes. However, he's pretty good. Love Kaisa. I uh, just want to put that out there. I love Kaisa. I think she is everything that you could want from an AD carry. I think she may actually be too much of what you want from every kind of AD carry. She's really good. Definitely think Braum's kind of maybe not fallen out of favor. But I mean, Braum had his time. Braum had his time where tank supports were just kind of the thing, and Braum would just exist in a, over the course of a fight, and any of your people that tried to get to backline with spells could not get it through. But I think that against Caitlyn Morgana, Braum really, I agree, he just kind of bites the bullet, quite literally, from this lane. You know, if you even if you're throwing up a shield and you block the damage from the Morgana Q, you're still going to get CC'd, you're still going to get locked down, you're still going to get chipped away. Uh, even as the tanginess of the Braum tries to persist with these fights, it does give them a good option in team fights. You know, if you're looking outside of laning, um, you know, having that option for the Braum ultimate to get Kaisa into the fights off of the back of her ultimate, it is a very good setup. Braum, no matter what Braum does or Braum doesn't isn't able to do with laning, he makes up for it in his ability to tag people with those stacks of his passive or the stun and the power of his ultimate knockup in fights. So it's it's always Brom will always be relevant. It's just is laning, you know, laning is rough as it is against Caitlyn Morgana. So really, I think at that point you just have to say we need to get past laning. We need to just not worry about laning, except that we're gonna get right clicked a bunch and figure out where we can go from there.
So that's going to be my take on that. Ari is going to go in for Sandillion. Ari is a champion that somebody that plays League of Legends very goodly is able to handle in a very goodly fashion. So I expect to see him moving around the map. You know, we saw him on the Yasuo who, you know, you talk a lot about Yasuo being sort of the scaling type carry. I think he can be an assassin all the same. You can set him up just like an assassin. He finds himself in the back row, picks people off, kills some people off. Um, at the same time, Ari is a very, you know, has a, has a good skill cap, you know, skill shots coming through, uh, dashes here and there. Good maneuverability, definitely a champion. You want to see somebody as skilled of a player as Cendillion on. So that's going to be pretty deadly. Band's going to come through. We're going to see Gragas Nidalee going to get ripped away from the R5 jungler. We are going to see Silas get taken away, so we don't get to see that coming through for Grim Legion. Sejuani going to get taken away as well. And we're going to see the pickup for Elise on Recon 5. You know, We're just going to rotate in these early power junglers. You're going to have Elise sitting there as you know the perennial. Land the cocoon, hit him with a stun, jump on him with the repel, eat him. It's it's pretty simple pattern for there. Yorick is gonna come through for Grim Legion. So wait a minute, is that gonna be a Nico mid? They did, you know, Nico is a flex pick. It is what it is. So we are gonna see the Yorick, and I, most of the time we're gonna see Yorick in the top lane. And an Olaf jungle. Once again, depending on Recon 5's last pick, we got like no tankiness out of this team. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely a. Uh, yeah, with an Olaf running it down, I feel like that's a pretty good pick, but. I, I still have confidence in Recon's playing ability and just being able to team fight their way out of. Oh lordy! That Ooh, is the pick jacks up. lock in. Like me some of that. He said, "You know what? I don't need to poke you anymore. I'm just gonna bring out the stick. We're gonna do some hitting. So we're gonna have Jax in the top lane up here for Recon Five. Interesting picks again. I, I think that a lot of what's happened is a lot of a repeat of the first game." where Recon 5 has just put a ton of DPS in their pockets and said, this is how we want to fight. And Grim Legion said, we're going to do our best to not let you run us over and kind of out tank you over the course of these fights and try to survive. You know, Olaf has the ability with the Ragnarok to run through people CC and try to pick off targets, try to get himself to the Caitlyn. It's still difficult for him to find, you know, Ari's mobile, Jax can jump off, Elise has Repel. Uh, maybe you can catch off Morgana. That'd be pretty cool. But I think it's still going to be rough picking for them if they, you know, if we see a repeat of what happened, you, you can't let a repeat of game one happen because you saw the disadvantage they were in and they were still able to drag themselves back up to a point where they were pretty even. That was pretty good of them. But if they, I think if they, if they draft a similar type of comp, you know, have the bulkiness in fights, have the sort of ultimate DPS coming out from the Kai'Sa, you put a little more damage in your pocket with the Nika Olaf than last time. So it looks a little bit better on paper. But I think that, you know, if they're able to keep themselves stable in laning, if they're able to, you know, Olaf, not exactly a vicious early ganker. You know, you can throw the axe and slow someone and say, oh, no, I'm slowed. This is very scary. You'll probably burn a flash. Olaf brings a lot of damage to ganks, so it's, it's pretty potent. But at the same time, I think he's more looking to help stabilize these lanes rather than snowball them to an early lead and just, you know, out tank this Recon 5 team over the course of the fight and just kind of walk up to him and say, hey, you have the good damage in these fights. We've got the bulkiness on the Olaf. You know, you can build tanky and still do good damage. We have the bulkiness on the on the Yorick. You have the Braum. You can just kind of say, ooh, you don't do enough damage to me. And it's kind of rough for you. And that's how the fights are. That's how Grim Legion wants these fights to look, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one thing that I want to see here is, again, you touched on earlier. We saw Grim Legion have some fight in them. We saw them being able to... You know, pick an advantage, advantageous fight and claw their way back in gold wise. I would really like to see them take some pick priorities and try to keep themselves ahead because despite closing that up and having some good life in them, they still lost when it came to 5v5 fighting in straight up mechanical fights against re the likes of Recon 5. I'm not, yeah, I don't not convinced right here with the Yorick versus Jax pickup. Um, once again, Yorick's going to want to split all game. You know, if, if they force to a 5v5 here, Jax is going to carry so much more weight than a Yorick. But like I said before, if they can get a few picks, let Yorick split, get the Olaf ganking with the Jax or something like that, I could see Grim Legion taking the game too. Yeah, I say it's definitely the fight 
that they it's this is the comp they want to happen. They're gonna probably roll the teleports again. You're gonna see Rifornic is gonna sit on the teleport. You're gonna see Kai, most likely. Uh, you know, with the Kai, so he's probably gonna end up running the heal. But as it comes through, you're gonna see Sindeli looking for the ignite. He's a very aggressive player. You see him on a pretty aggressive champion, Ari and Danico. You're able to play a lot of that. You know, poke them down, find the right time, land the charm, going for the kill. It's a very uh, flowchart type method to playing Ari. And at the same time, yeah, we're gonna see the double heals come out. No shenanigans are gonna come out from these bot laners. Uh, I think a lot of the importance here is gonna be Rifornik being able to stave off Sindelian coming at him. He's gonna throw a lot of the uwus his direction from the Ari. And you know, with Nico it's interesting because you don't have you don't really have the range advantage with Nico. You have the you know, you have a lot to deal with coming at you with Ari, you know, Q poking through minions. Uh, you know, Nico doesn't have as much range with her E to go for the harass while she's trying to farm. So it's, you know, dodging charms becomes a little bit of an issue. Um, you know, dodging cues, you know, if you get yourself poked down, then you put yourself in a pretty bad spot for Mari. Especially with Moody, who you saw on the Gragas, was willing to look for all the ganks in the world. Uh, now that he's on Elise, who, who's pretty much existence, says, I'm here to land a cocoon and kill you. This is just exactly what you're going for on this champion. It's definitely going to look in their favor. And I think that this is going to be another snowball that Recon 5 is going to look to roll over the uh, side of Grim Legion. Something I'm really looking forward to are going to be the RE ganks. I really hope that at some point in time she finds time to get up there against that Yorick. And Yorick is all just like, oh, whoa, what's this? There's an RE in lane. And that's how I think Recon 5 is going to be pressing their advantage. Let's throw this into a loading screen. We'll be back, guys. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Too. Three minutes speculator delay. Just I kidding. Dumb. We've got more information. We've got even more for you. Change up coming through. We are going to see the cleanse get the swap up. You know, it shows us the summoners from last game when you check out the spectate, but we do see it swap over on the spectate delay. Rifornik is going to run the cleanse on that Nico. That is an important tool. Definitely, I think cleanse itself is an underrated summoner spell. And, you know, a lot of it, you see it a lot less, you know, lower elo type games because it's a very reaction based spell. You have to use it. You have to use it very, very uh, precisely. But having it against the, you know, the range CC is exactly where you want to bring it. Morgana binding, Ari charm, Elise cocoon—they're all things you need to worry about. Um, you know, when you're looking for these engages, Nico. So bringing the cleanse against that range CC is very important. And I think if Rifornik is able to use it at the right time, you know, catch catch Zendelia looking for a charm finding the charm and then trying to follow up on it, cleansing it and turning that around to get a little bit of that damage to come through. That's going to be very important for Rifornik's sort of battle plan here. So if he can utilize that cleanse against the Ignite of Sindelian, it'll be very nice to see. But, you know, as it comes through, I think that's going to be another point of contention. I got I a question be... for you here. I what don't know do if you... I want to answer this. <laughs> what do you like to see more? The Nico mid, the Nico top, or the Nico AD carry? I hate all three of those. I'm a master of seven Nico support, so I don't want to talk about anything else. But that's just me. I'm a degenerate, so it is what it is. We're going to see more of this game go down, and uh, I think we're going to throw this over to a break. So we're going to catch you guys for game two. Get excited. Are we going to see the sweep come through for Recon 5, or are we going to see Grim Legion pull it out to a 1-1? We'll be right back.
And we are here, woo and welcome everybody! We've got Game 2 of Grim Legion Esports and Recon 5. We are ready to get back onto the rift. There are pings all over the map. Look at these pings coming out from Grim Legion. They're gonna run to that top lane. They're flying to the top lane. They have things to do. They have places to go. We're just looking at everything, looking standard for Recon 5. We're looking for a get, get... I love cats. I love my cat. Everybody love your cat. It's all good. We're gonna see everything come through. Grim Legion is gonna stack up in this bush. The pings are coming through. Nobody on the on the side of Recon 5 has an idea. Get down, get down, get down. Looking for more action. Your part-time dad's gonna flash the mastery. He might get found here. They're looking for him though. He's gonna pop a word over the wall and he is gonna fly over there. <laughs> Nobody's gonna touch him. That missed Olaf axe might have been different, but part-time dad knows the ins and outs of his champs, jumps over the wall. Yeah, we're gonna see that that was definitely grim legion trying to make a statement there they tried to make something happen the the pings were going through from everybody on that side of the map there like if we can get some cheese we're gonna make it swiss part-time dad they picked on the wrong champion he had enough time to i don't know if he had a skill selected already but they are gonna in response ward down on that red side to see if they're starting at the red buff gonna now, put themselves in a decent advantage something of note there is that part-time dad was actually fairly late into the tri bush if Grim Legion would have just ran straight into that tri bush when they got up there. They might have been able to catch him uh, face check the tribe, but they delayed slightly and gave him enough time to stick to it. Yeah, I was going to say, definitely between having Rifornix snare there, that would have been probably a guaranteed kill. But it is what it is. We are going to see everything stay pretty standard. Uh, part time death's not going to have his trinket. That's about as bad as it's going to get. In my experience, top laners don't use their trinkets anyway. Right, I'm like, what do they really need to see? They're going to get ganked level 2 and 2.5 and anyway, so it is what it is. But they are able to spot out. They do have that ward on the red side, which they are going to see the Hands of Blood is heading himself towards the race there. So he's going to maybe head himself towards the top side of the map afterwards. But we see Moody rotating down. Like, just the Caitlyn Morg. Boom Hunter's going to take a tower shot, and he doesn't even care. They're as safe as safe could be on this lane and I don't even, I direct the camera every time you take me down here I get angry part time dad's going for the stun trying to put a bit of damage down doesn't even have passes coming up there he doesn't have the auto reset but he's going to put damage down trade a little bit with the conquer pvp is going to say you can bring that fight to me I can make it happen and just look you can see the advantage coming out you can see Yuki Bunny is just absolutely abusing these aspects of this Caitlyn 5 CS now for Kai and Yuki is just ripping it up to about triple his right now they're dodging traps dodging pulls dodging bindings there's just it's it's a mini game of a lane. You can't you can't play this you can't play this lane like any other lane that you want to play. You don't get to play League of Legends. You get to play Caitlyn's shooting gallery. It just is what it is. Well, like I touched in the pro draft, I really don't think a melee tank support is what you want to go against in a Caitlyn Morgana lane. However, Brom's shield does really help keep some of the damage off of Kaisa. Um, and he can step on the trap purposely and take some of that damage. So we'll see how it plays out. But definitely, definitely going to be playing under the tower all game. Yeah, and he definitely picked the Brom in this match. I mean, this is this is definitely the what you call the picking the scale. The charm isn't going to come through. Look at that damage coming through. Right, Fornic, he does not dodge out that Ari combo. We see Moody's going to sit there in the back. PvP is looking for him. Hands of blood. Oh, the immediate flash out of that wall. As we see, these damage is coming through. Even Bulbasaur can't take a lot of damage. We see Moody's on the side there, looking for a setup for the stun over the wall. He's a, oh, he's not going to find the stun, and now they know Moody's there. So we saw an opposite play. We saw R5 gank bottom with their jungler, and Grim Legion gank top with their jungler. Not Nothing come of either of it, but at least they are trying. An effort was made. It works out for them. I mean, they got... Hymns of Blood did get part time Splash. And Jax not having Flash is very important because Jax is a champion that has to, you know, if he wants to fight you, he has to typically commit. You know, Yorick isn't going to always come to you. And if you see an opportunity where you can go for the stun setup, you can go for the action after that, you're going to look for it and jump in. And not having that Flash to escape. Oh, the Flash charm from Zendillion out of mana as we see right for it trying to walk away. Moody lands the stun. Ignite comes out and we do see it get picked up. Zendillion is going to find the first one, spending every bit of his mana. For that flash charm and that is exactly what gets him the kill 
Rhyphornic, you have the cleanse available, my man. We also have flash available, but it is what it is. So he's gonna go down. Is it possible to smurf in Masters? <laughs> I'm sure there's some out there. They just don't really know what to do with their lives, so they're just smurfing in Masters, but it is what it is. But as we see things taper out, we are going to see the recall come through Hands of Blood. <laughs> Throws the axe just a bit late, and Dillian is going to make his recall get known. Typically, I don't think that's called smurfing. I feel like that's just called sitting, but... <laughs> you know, people have their own turns. We do see at the same time... Oh! Kai! Oh, the flash from Sleepy! He, no, Ikea is gonna flash in there! He's looking for the damage the Black Shield is up! Is it enough? No! He dies for the Ignite! It doesn't come out, and that's the root coming down. The trap on Sleepy. He has nowhere to go. Can't walk over. No. Wait a minute! At the same time, Rhyphornix gonna find the Flash Q. Turns it around and gets the kill on a Boom Hunter. That's so... Oh, the charm's gonna come through on the Rhyphor, though. So Dillian has to watch out there. Now, to, to go back a little bit here... Kaisa Brom thought they had that. Oh, never mind. Moody's oh, going yeah, hold on. That was a PvP. Sets up the cage and flashes past it, traps him back in there as he heads out. Alright, as I was saying, Kaisa Brom thought they had that because they were holding on to flash and heal. So they jump in, but Yuki Bunny was also uh, holding on to heal. By Fornix. Oh, awesome. For the shield. Oh no! The Tormented Soil is going to find the kill there. Finds the shield right after the bad trade. It's going to be the full Ari combo. Going to go through and just enough residual damage for Boom Hunter to find the finish off with the W. Money in his pocket. Well, just oh no way! Did he get the crab too? He sure did. Oh, that's ugly. Just like last game, this game starts out 1-4. to four. Feels bad. As the kids say, can we get an F in chat? That was unfortunate. I feel bad for Hands of Blood. That is what it is. But Sindillion's going to put some tower play in his pocket, and Hands of Blood just got to gotta walk that off. Speaking of walking off, this damage, here's the Morgana ultimate. I can't have nowhere to go, and that's the sun coming through. There's the Caitlyn trap. Sleepy has nowhere to go. He's got to pop a Q. He goes for the BM ace in the hole, and that's the double kill in for Yuki Bunny. Moody's on the back, doesn't quite find the stun on the on the PvP. I was just thinking to myself that that ace in the hole was a little BM, and sure enough... That was turbo. Yeah, I don't know. Even. That was definitely it. That was definitely Yuki Bunny saying, there's something in the bush, ooh, ooh what's this? Gave him the gun and uh, put him out of his misery. But uh, as things are progressing here, you know, we're building... We're already building a pretty small lead, you know. This is this is what happens. This is, and I talked about this at the start of game one, and I, I talked about it. I talked about Recon 5's ability. You know, you see the you see the scores on these teams, and you say, you know, does Recon 5 have the ability to sort of? Oh, there's the Ragnarok coming through. Gonna walk through the trap. It still gives the headshot bonus. Oh no, the flash. That's not where you want to go. Hands of blood. He just gave up. Another F in chat from my boy Hands of Blood. He did not make that flash over the wall. He is down for the count. As I was saying, this is definitely what I asked in the start of the first game. Does Recon 5 have the ability to sort of better than you their way through the game? And oh no, Moody. Tries to throw the shield up to catch it from the side. The stun's gonna come through onto him. Looking for Braum there. He's trapped up, snared up, nowhere to go. Sleepy goes down again. Yeah, this is going to be Recon. Oh, no, I, I, I can't. He tries to turn. Oh, he goes for the ultimate, but he's bound up. He has nowhere to go. There's the BM it's in the hole. Just puts a little target on him and says, hey, this guy's dead. And that's going to be another go getting picked up. So this I, I, action just keeps happening. I can't I can't find a moment to talk about it. But Recon Caitlin. 5, you know. Caitlyn oh. there. Oh. Right Caitlin. before he goes for the cleanse. Drops the ignite after the cleanse so he doesn't get it off of him in time. And that's going to be the solo kill to Sedillion. And Dillian was just sitting there in lane and goes, Oh, whoa, well, notices your health bar. It is gone. Die with me, brother. Sindillion with the outplay. Very unfortunate. And, you know, these are the lanes that I think Recon 5 was looking to draft. You know, maybe not maybe not the, the Jax, 
But these are the types of lane bully lanes that Recon 5 is really looking to go for this game, and I think this is definitely a much better look for them. They they really want to put themselves in a position, you know, they can play their champs for fun, they can kind of play in a way that'll let them uh, blow up team fights with a lot of damage, but I think that this is a Recon 5 style that they are used to. They kind of just pick lanes, pick champs that will win them the lane, and get them so far ahead that the other team really never gets to the point that they can play over the... They can play over the freaking... Yeah. They, they basically deny the other team the chance to scale. And that's just kind of how it is. You're getting Caitlyn worked on. You're now 0031 in your bot lane. You have a tier. You'll probably be sitting on that tier with your tiers for a long time. They are going to pick up a Rift Herald. So, you know, that is going to be the, the two takes of Rift Herald back to back for Grim Legion. Maybe we'll see something happen. We'll see something happens uh, with this Rift Herald. It could be something. Now, I just want to point out that. Last game, we did see a swing of 7,000 gold lead from Gr uh, Grim Legion. Oh no, part time dad. Hope. However, Teleport's gonna come through. When he drops a stun on the side, but PvP is gonna say, hey, part time, I see you down here. And he's gonna come up and meet him. They are gonna try to go tower for tower there. I don't know that they dropped the rift. They did not drop the rift though. They are gonna drop it in the mid lane though. So they're going to push out on the sides. We only have Sendillion here in the middle. They do have to watch out for Sendillion. Sendillion has a GLP now. He's going to look for the Freezer. Drops the Q. There's the auto. Sendillion misses the charm and he goes to the GLP. Finds the slow hands of blood. Has the Ragnarok available. May have to get out, but he's not going to go for the Spirit Rush follow. He is going to focus down on the Rift Herald instead. Boom Hunter has the Mobius. Lucas finds a snare. Gets through the clone. Or gets it past the clone before he uh, spawns in the hitable. Definitely good anti anti skill shot check on Nico from a Nico support player. If you throw it early enough, their skill shot will hit your clone. It doesn't it doesn't always go through it, it only happens if it hasn't fully spawned yet. But is what it is. So we're gonna see a lot of plating. We're gonna see two towers go over to the side of Recon 5. They're looking to get down this lane tower as much as they can. But this is once again looking very grim for Grim Legion. The Tom Tish. Yeah, they are absolutely getting stalked out in their own jungle right now. This is <laughs> nowhere is safe for Grim Legion right now. They don't have uh, PvP on this Yorick doing enough to fight back on these towers. They're down three towers at this point. They're just kind of storming. I mean, this is this is what Caitlyn offers you even when she's not super she's just deleted. No cleanse available for Ifornic. He's locked up, snared up, ace in the hold. The man is dead. And I mean, this this is just the power of Caitlyn by herself. With or without a lead, you now have a fully functional siege comp. You have Caitlyn right clicking on anybody trying to get close, setting a trap line for anybody that tries to make a move, and just right clicking and headshotting your towers to her heart's content. And really, at this point, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't answer this. There, she's knocking on the door. She's and each knock on the door is just breaking part of your door at this point. Part time dad looking for the stun traps in the blood. He's trapped up in the cage, looking for a little more Sandillion over the wall. Looking for a little more throws the charm doesn't quite find it. Sidillion sliding in with the ult. Gulf him again. Ace and Hulk's getting blocked up. Moody is just in the center of things. Knocked up by the Brawl Ultimate. Black Shield a little bit too late. We're gonna see Moody's gonna go down there. Recon 5 seemingly is just doing whatever they want in Ooh. this game. Stopwatch coming up for Boom Hunter. He's gonna get centered up though. I can't ult in! Looking for someone. He's gonna get flashed on my part-time dad. He's gonna die next. Yeah, this is something. We're seeing the GLP come through. Tower shot on the Sandillion. He doesn't care that much. So they're looking for a little more shot, shot, shot on the tower. They're just going to back off and reset here, it looks like. This could be a chance here if Olaf swings. Oh, no. Olaf is way too low. He's having a rough time with that red buff. Yeah, say Olaf's not too terribly worried, you know, having between the Berserker's Rage passive and the effect of his W that gives him a life steal on his attacks, he's he can go pretty dangerously low and then end up with a lot more than he had at the start. But he doesn't like take that red and you know. double pink ward in the bush here, Braum is found. That's like finding a gold aggressive. Mine. That is definitely a support dream right there. That is a free sixty gold. You don't you don't get to see sixty gold anywhere in your lifetime as a support. You you cherish that. You know who does get 360 gold? This Morgana. 3, 1, and 8. True. She, she is a support worth a bounty. That 
That speaks to me on a level. <laughs> I think we need a new poll. Who is going to have the better KDA? Sandillion or Yuki at the end of this game? Oh, Sandillion is trying to make his case though. Dropping a lot of CC down on hands above, but his team is back there with him. Didn't want to quite slide through him with that spirit rush. And that's going to be the Drake going down. We see Infernal getting picked up on the side of Recon 5. Grim Legion is still trying to work on a tower here. They have PvP off on the side. He doesn't have teleport available to join any fights or anything. But he is looking pretty aggressively at this top lane tower. He has the main with him. Probably going to get it. Nobody seems to be even caring about him for Recon 5. So they say, we've got 5 down here. You don't want to answer us with 5. That's your problem. Zendillion finds a charm on the side. Sleeping Bulls are slides up there. They drop. GLP in response. It's gonna be a glacial war here. Well, at this point in the game, I feel they oh, have no. to get the orcs off. They have to get some of these turrets and even up some of this gold. So yeah, they're losing right. a lot, but they need to do something here. Yeah, they have to find a way to gain something somewhere. And they are gonna lose the tower there to the, the bot lane. So the five to one is gonna be the tower of the BC. And we're just gonna see PvP's just gonna keep on keeping on with the island, man. Part time sl flaps over the wall with the jump, stuns up on the sleepy. He's gonna find smack after smack after smack. Sindillion's next one over the wall, trying to find the GLP slow into Ikea. He's gonna fly over there. Sun's gonna come down for Moody. Look at that damage coming over Fortnite. He cleanses in time. We're seeing damage coming up. They're finally gonna send somebody back to look at PvP there as he tries to beat down this tower. Oh, there's a trap. We're gonna be on the clone though. Baits that out. And with this comp, with the Caitlyn Morgana at least here, they got long range CC. Oh, no. They've got enough I... poke that they can just stay here. They can 3v3 all they want. Sleepy! That's unfortunate. Black Shield's gonna lock that up. We're gonna see the Repel come through. Double kill's gonna. Nobody can get to Yuki in time. Yeah, That's gonna absolutely. be the triple kill coming in for Yuki Bunny. Looking for Sleepy next. Moody's standing on the two minutes, so it's not enough. That's actually their two minutes, so PvP on the same time is gonna get two man here. Looking for part time dad and civilian. Finds the Q for the kill. They're gonna find the kill on him, and everybody's dead besides Levi Bulbasaur. They're looking to come in and shoot down this tower. And like I said, Yuki could just sit down here. He's in no danger. Um, with a Morgana spell shield, with the Morgana and Elise's CC long range and traps to follow him up, Yuki's the safest person in the world right here. Yeah, this is. This is brutal. This is not the disadvantage the Grim Legion was at last game. They were at no more than a 7k disadvantage, and now it is stretched out to a 12k. Here at the 18 minute mark, this is this is mostly bullying at this point. I don't think anybody... I, I think it would take three people on the side of Grim Legion to stand up to even one of the carries on Recon 5, but... So I just mm. want to point something out here. Yuki had, well, had more than double the gold of his counterpart. It's now 9,000 to 5,500. As, as Kai was able to pick up a little bit of the farm there and jump again. It's okay. Kai's working on his man immune. He's, uh, he's scaling. We're gonna see the slow coming through. The, we're gonna see the snare going up onto him. The rappel is next. We're gonna see him hold on to that Ragnarok. Oh, part-time dad's just gonna walk in there, looking for hands of blood. Actually, black shielded up. They can't actually be stopped right now. Ragnarok's gonna come through. There's a flash from Boom Hunter. Finds enough damage. Blue's gonna find the kill on the hands of blood. They're looking for the kill on the PVP next. This is looking like it's it's a curtain closer. Just a reminder, everyone. Baron is spawning in 30 seconds. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to see Baron spawn this game. Yuki is going to find the kill on Janiko there. Rush Fornix going to get two shot there. Sindillion is trying to find a combo zone. Moody's going to pick up the kill there. More flashes coming through. Double kill coming in for Yuki. Does flash for that kill. Puts another one in his pocket. He is 10 0 and 5 now. And this is. I think this is the end. I don't think that PvP and Hands of Blood are looking to make this fight happen. Part time Daz is going to TP to the wave in the center of mid lane to shove that in to bring it in for the next. Maybe trying to get the full inhibitors, trying to get their mission complete with the destroy 10 inhibitors mission. Make sure they get that done in this match. 
Stopwatch gonna come out from Moody. Gonna look for a little more. He's gonna actually die there. Not gonna be unfortunate there. Oh, the ultimate in from I Kai, Kai is gonna get the kill. Honest and Dillion there. Lots of shutdown money for him. He's gonna be able to buy a whole recurve bow off that. That is beautiful. Gonna find the snare. Looking for a little more. Kai is gonna end up heading out of that game. He's gonna buy his recurve bow and peace out. We're gonna look for a little more bullying inside the base of the city. They're gonna set their wars, and that is gonna be the 2-0 for Recon 5. With a swift uwoo, that is gonna be everything this team is looking for. Yuki Bunny, an absolutely dominating performance on 11 0 and 7. I don't know what else there is to say. Recon 5 came in, they said, We're gonna play our game, and this is what it looks like. I just wanna point out, Yuki did in fact win the KDA race. Although, we're talking straight KDA. Look at Boom Hunter, 3 1 and 19. That's a 22 KDA. The highest kill participation match as well. All I have to say is, yuck. That is definitely, I mean, this is, this is what Recon 5 will do to you. A couple sessions of Recon 5 in your system, it, uh, it's some kind of drug. So Recon 5 is going to go up to, I believe, 4 and 1. Yes. So, All right, we're going look for to... more from go into a break. We're going to try to get an interview here. I don't know who yet. Oh, boy. But give us a short break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We still got to have some great uwus out of Sindillion or somebody that wants to. Be right back. And we're off. Hello, we are back. Uh, we've got the man himself, Recon 5's Windillion. Uh, we're joined here by Sandillion. Uh, thanks for joining us here today. Let me know, how did it feel today? Taking that it, was, it was pretty good. Um, you know, game one was a bit closer. Uh, my jungler, you know, of course, 
I decided, you know, this is going to be a boring series, if not. So he decided to mix it up, you know, miss a few Greg assaults, all that jazz. Fair. Now, it's it's uh, funny because I... I was actually complimenting Moody on all of those Grog assaults. <laughs> like, all game. Uh, yeah. I don't know what you're talking you know, about. Maybe, maybe it's just he had a few good ulties, but there's a, there was definitely I, more I, practice needed. Maybe it's <laughs> just I think, you were confused. I think you were confused by the Silas taking the Gragas ultimates. He nailed those. But, uh, oh, Moody, true, true. He didn't he... nail those. But, uh, you know, what was the, you know, what what kind of thing, you know, it's interesting, you know, you talk about a lot, you know, preparing for these games, but I think, you know, Grim Esports, or Grim Legion, not quite the team that's been, you know, up to par, not looking like they're the team that's been as strong as they could be. Is it sort of a, we practice, you know, just go through your normal practice routine and not really look it up, or just kind of say, hey, we're going to try playing our style, and if it doesn't work, we'll change it. Uh, you have, uh, what I meant is, we, do you have a plan going in against I mean, this team? Or you just we say, always have plans going into teams, but like honestly, like, our coach looked at their OPGG and he verbally said something along the lines of like, <laughs> he was just so confused when he saw their OPGG. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. Sounds good. So, yeah. so the game plan was just play the game. I like it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know, other teams, yeah, you, you, you kind of need to look forward. But so, what you're saying, Sindelian, is that your coach took a look at their op.gg and said, "Oh, oh, what's this?" Exactly. That is exactly what he said. He said, "Ooh, woo." Time to pick Yasuo. Notices the uh, Doric top. <laughs> yep. So in the first game, um. Your Yasuo. Uh huh. Do, do you have a lot of experience on Yasuo? Are you a Yasuo main? Because he looked a little more comfortable on the Ari. Uh, I think the last time I played Yasuo was like <laughs> two months ago. <laughs> so yeah, not not my most comfortable champion, but that's okay. I, uh, I I played a lot of them in the past, even if I haven't played him recently. I, I like it. You see some knockups, you say Yoa, Yasuo time. Let's go for it. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it was Yasuo time. Despite, it, again, we were talking about first game just because it was a little more uh, of a competition here. Despite them coming back from a large gold deficit, you guys had the team comp of the massive wombo combos with the Gragas alt, the Yasuo alt, the Nico alt, and we got to see it in a fight around Dragon, where, they, where the enemy team funneled in. Oh, yeah. And everybody just kind of blew them up. Um, was that your goal from the beginning in draft? Was let's just go straight up team fight wombo combo, or was it just a happy accident that all your champs? Uh, no, no, it was definitely intentional. Our coach was, like, as, as soon as we locked in, uh, I don't remember what our third pick, it was Rakan or the Zaya. Uh, but as long as, as soon as we locked in the Rakan Zaya, uh, my coach is like, all right, it's Yasuo Gragas time. Like, he, even before the bands or anything went off. So, like, it was definitely pre planned. Well, I liked seeing it, Zendillion. Uh, you got a lot of fans out there. Is oh, it, I, it's, it's very. <laughs> That's, right, that's all man. of our. That's all our stream <laughs> chat has been. When is. we see when we see the mid lane power rankings come out, we're gonna have number zero Sandillion. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> my, my my question is, do you do you have anything to say to the fans? Do they do they have more Sandillion to look forward to? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know this fun fact. If you ever if you've ever watched me in a uh, other leagues, say Nightfall last season of ABL, I, I actually get a buff. Riot decides to buff me during playoffs, and uh, the game gets a lot easier from there. Huh. I'm looking forward to the recon to be. I'm sorry, the Cindillion buff. Uh, it's gonna be a thing. All right. Is there anybody that you would like to shout out here, Cindillion? Maybe your uh, your support, Morgana, with the uh, three, one, and nineteen supporting you. Uh, we had to support that game. <laughs> there we go. That's what I like to hear. I'm, I'm sorry, Boom, I didn't mean. <laughs> You <laughs> popped off. Uh, shout out to Gnarly and Flibble. Good wow. coaches. All right, well, thank you very much for the interview, Sindillion. I hope you continue the winning, continue the win spree, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. See ya. Take it easy. And I believe that's all we've got for today. So thank you for joining us. That is going to be Recon 5 taking the 2-0 series over Grim Legion Esports. Again, I'm Skyson, and I was joined by my boy Ark Wolf. So 
thanks for joining us. We'll catch you guys, I think, next week. I don't think there's another game set for this week. I don't know the schedule. When we come back up, we will let you people know there are several places you can check. Check us out. Y'all have a good night. That's right. There actually is no game tomorrow. I was wrong. So have a good one, guys, from the production staff of the ABL Stream 2. See you next time.